between my Savior. I keep falling in love with him over, over and over, over again. He keeps blessing me oh, over and over, over and over and over, over again. He keeps blessing me oh. Over and over and over, oh, again. He gets sweeter, sweeter as days go by. Oh, love between Savior, I keep falling in love. Him over, over and over. Cleansing me oh, over and over, over and over and over, oh, again. He keeps cleansing me over and over, over and over, oh, again. He gets sweeter, sweet as the days. By oh, what love between my Savior and I keep falling love over and over, over and over and over, oh, again. Church, say amen. Certainly good to see you all on this wonderful Thursday night. Amen. God has blessed us and enabled us to gather in this place one more time. Um, are there any prayer requests? Quickly, quickly, we'll get into our study on this evening. Come on, sister. All right, brother, sister Durr are both under the weather on this uh, evening, and also sister Hicks as she's traveling. Come on, sister. Keep them in our prayers, anyone else. Amen. Amen. Y'all pray for our family. Amen. Pray for the children. Satan, uh, don't just come after grown folk. Amen. Uh, and so, y'all, let's, let's always pray that we might resist Satan uh, and his attempts to tear down what God is building. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you first for being God all by yourself. Lord, that you created us in your image. Father, from eternity, you have made sure that there would be a way that we could be right with you. Father, we thank you for Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We ask, Father, that you'd forgive us for our shortcomings, those things, Lord, that we often do that separate us from you. Father, it is our desire to, to dwell in your presence, and not only, Lord, in eternity, but even now through your Holy Spirit. Father, we ask that you be with those who have been mentioned on this evening. Caldwell family, Father, you know what they stand in need of. Those, Lord, who are traveling, be with Sister Hicks. Bring her back safely, Father. Father, we also ask that you be with those who are sick on this evening. Be with Sister Reuben. Be with uh, my in-laws, Lord. Bless them, Father, with those things that they stand in need of. Touch their body. And Father, we just thank you for your healing power. Father God, just forgive us once again when we fall short. We ask that you be with our children. Help us, Lord, to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of thee. And that, 
Lord, when they are faced with troubles and trials, that they might know how to stand and be protected by your spirit. Father, as we study on this evening, we ask that you be with those who are in this place, those who desire to be in this place that could not make it, those, Father, who are following us online. Bless their lives. Build us up in those things that are according to your word. Tear us down in those things which are not. We ask these prayers humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, y'all. Um, real quick, last week we we stopped at the uh, thief on the cross. We stopped at the thief on the cross. And I want to quickly, quickly skim that um, for the purposes that we understand that we understand um, Christ, his doctrine, and what our response. Uh, uh, let, me, let, me, let me share this quick post with you. I'm going to read this off in your hearing real quick. Um, now, what we surely need to know as we study this study uh, concerning eternal life, all right, uh, we will, not as we are, we will live for eternity, all right? Now, um, I don't want us to believe, and it's a false doctrine and pretense, that there is no responsibility to the sinner that his soul might be saved. Y'all probably heard that doctrine, all right? That Jesus died on the cross for the sin of every man, all right? Now, you believe that, some would say you're saved. You believe Jesus died on the cross for the sin of every man, then that's all you need. You have no other responsibility to ensure your salvation. All right, so watch this. Here's a post. No baptism, listen, no communion, no confirmation, no speaking in tongues, no mission trips, no volunteering, no financial gifts, no church clothes, he couldn't even bend his knees to pray. This is talking about the thief on the cross. He couldn't even bend his knee to pray. He didn't say the sinner's prayer, and among other things, he was a thief. Jesus didn't take away his pain, heal his body, or smite his coffers. Yet, it was a thief who walked into paradise the same hour as Jesus, simply by believing. I believe James says, the devils believe and tremble. So, that means the devils are saved. All right. It says he had nothing more to offer than his belief that Jesus was who he said he was. No spin from brilliant, brilliant theologians, no ego or arrogance, no shiny lights, skinny jeans or crafty words, no haze machine, no nuts or coffee in the lobby, just a naked, dying man on the cross, unable to even fold his hands to pray. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And that's why we need those who are trained in the gospel, those who God sent in the gospel, to impart to us what it means to believe Jesus if we are going to have eternal life with Christ. Amen? All right? So this belief is a belief based on faith. Faith. And that faith will cause you to do some things. The true believer does commune the first day of every week. 
The true believer is commanded to assemble with the saints the first day of every week. We do have responsibilities and duties as God's people. So I just want to hit that real quick about the thief on the cross. All right. And also we covered that last week, so we're going to move on. Jesus had the power, that was in Mark chapter 2, right, to forgive sins while he was on the earth, right? And what does what Jesus told the thief have to do with you? If someone has leprosy today, and they go down to the Jordan River and dip seven times and expect for it to go away, it worked in the Bible, didn't it? But those instructions were given to specific individuals, right? Ten lepers, go show yourselves to the priest, right? All right, all right. So we better understand context, church, and we better keep that uh, as, as a, a principle in the back of our mind when we study God's word. Book, chapter, verse, proper context, Holy Spirit. All right, without that, someone will lead you astray. All right, let's go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. I didn't hand out no mics. Uh, yes, ma'am, help me out right quick. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 19. And I will, Lord will, uh, on next week, have the, uh, the remainder of the lesson that you don't have uh, for your handouts. So you'll have the rest of the lesson. Lord, we'll on next week, okay? All right. Um, now, let's look at the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul. Uh, what's special, y'all, about the Apostle Paul and his understanding of things pertaining to Christ and the church. What's special? What's special about the Apostle Paul and things pertaining to Christ and the church that the Apostle Paul shared? Anybody real quick? What's special about the Apostle Paul? What's special about him? I believe he testifies that the things that he knew about Christ and about the kingdom were revealed to him by Jesus Christ. Paul wasn't taught like me and you taught. Somebody sat us down, some preacher, somebody in Bible class, they sat us down and they taught us about the scripture, right? Same thing with Timothy, his grandmama and his, and his mama, Eunice and Lois, they, they taught him about the word of God, amen? All right, y'all remember some of your, your old Bible class teachers way on back yonder? All right, but Paul, Paul testifies that he didn't receive it from men. His apostleship, what he knew, it came straight from Jesus Christ. Straight from Jesus Christ. So when Paul teaches us, he's teaching us revelation. That came straight from Christ Jesus. All right? Good stuff. Now let's look at this. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Y'all got it? I got the American Standard. Chapter 2. Uh, let's go to uh, verse 19 and 20. All right? 19 and 20. And I like this. This good stuff. First Thessalonians chapter 2. All right. I'm going to start at verse 17 just to read into it. It says, Will be, brethren, being bereaved of you for a short season, in presence, not in heart, endeavoring the more exceedingly to see your face with great desire, because we would fain have come unto you. I, Paul, once and again, and he says, Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of glory in? Are not even ye before our Lord Jesus at his coming? 
for ye are our glory and our joy. All right. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Now, Paul is expecting to be with the saints in glory. I want to see you in glory. Have y'all ever thought about that? I want to see my brothers and sisters in glory. Now, it's some stuff that ain't going to be in glory. The BET Awards ain't going to be in glory. Ratchet stuff ain't going to be. Our ratchet friends, amen. Alabama football ain't going to be in glory. Now, as we prepare for eternity, and what Paul says I'm longing for, uh, somewhere he says to live is Christ, and to die is what? Gain. Now, Paul said he was content. He said, I've learned to be content in every situation. Uh, has anybody in here reached that? Anybody reached that spiritual contentment? No matter what, you know what? Anybody? You working on it? You working on that? Now, Paul said, now, Paul wasn't depressed. He didn't have a death wish. Amen. He didn't want to walk out in front of no bus. But he says, I'm living in preparation for eternity. So if I were to die, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Abraham bosom. Lord have mercy. No more pain, no more worry. Lord have mercy. Huh? Paul said he had that thorn in his flesh. Now, but he's preparing. And I want to see the saints in glory. Are y'all seeing this? Now let's go to 2 Corinthians. Who got a mic going to help me out? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus uh -huh. will raise us also with Jesus and uh -huh. will present us with you. Hold on now. What did he say? Now, see, this, <coughs> this, this lesson helping me, y'all, because we got all kind of ideas about eternity, don't we? All kind of ideas about heaven. But what we, what we normally, you know, we got songs and stuff. So, Mark, you heard some of them, right? You know, uh, the, 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 the walls are jasper and the streets are gold. We, we, them songs, right? Tree with fruit. Twelve fruits? Did it say twelve fruits? For the healing of the nation? Did it say how many fruits on that tree? That's your bonus question. Somebody find that. Somebody find that. But it said tree with fruit. For the healing. No need, listen. No need for the sun. Because the sun, the S-O-N, is there. Can y'all imagine this? Huh? The brethren told me he wanted a gold chain for Christmas. And when I got down there to the goldsmith, and he started talking about five, six, seven hundred dollars, I said, sorry, son. But in heaven, streets paved with gold. But wait a minute. What did Paul say? Come on, come on, come on one more time, Brother bro Byron. What did he say, Brother Davis? What did he say? One more Lord, time. He who raised the Lord Jesus. He who raised the Lord Jesus up. Will raise us also. With will you. raise us up also. And present us with you. And present us. Paul says, me, the Apostle Paul, he said, I'm looking for God 
to raise y'all up and to raise us up too. Lord Jesus. I'm looking for God to raise y'all up and raise the preacher up too and present us there. Now, uh, 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 who, where am I? Let's get this right quick. Let me, let me, let's throw this in here. Let's throw this in here. Changed in an instant. Now, y'all do realize, y'all do realize what we're doing right. Y'all see, we, we studying. Y'all see this? This is how your preacher study. Y'all can do it too. Right? Right? Now, y'all can call me what you want. I know what I need to know now. You know, I mean, we got some we got some rascals in here, boy. They, ooh, they got they got all that stuff. Boo, that ain't me. But I know how to go get it. Amen. I know what's in there. Amen. If you call off something and it sounds, uh, uh, you know, the Bible says so and so. Where, where, you, where you read that at? Amen. First Corinthians. Add this in your notes. Add this in your notes. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. 52. Add it in your notes. First Corinthians 15. Add it in your notes. Who won't get that? Watch this now. First Corinthians 15. 52. In a flash, mm -hmm. in the twinkling of an eye, mm -hmm. at the last trumpet. Uh huh. For the trumpet will sound. All right. The dead will be raised. All right. Imperishable. Uh huh. And we will be changed. Be changed. One version say in an instant. The pain racking your body. And molds and birthmarks and scars in an instant. In an instant. Come on, sister. What you got? Uh huh. Revelation 22 and 2. What it say? Revelation. What? Come on, y'all. We studying. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life? Was there the tree of life? Which bear twelve manners. Which bear what? Fruit. Twelve manners. Twelve manner of what? Fruit. Fruit for and, what? And yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the man. Oh, 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 oh! See, that's why we, we, we see that's why we thank God for the for the word. So we make sure we get it right, right? All right, so it's 12 fruit now. But is the fruit for the healing? What's for the healing? What's for the healing? What's for the healing? Y'all looking at it now. What's for the healing? 12 different fruit. That don't even sound right. You, we ain't gonna tell God what to do now. 12 different fruit. I don't know what it is now. Peach, apricot, apple on, avocado. What, what, what's on the tree? What's what's gonna heal you? The leaves. Twelve fruit, but the leaves. Now this tree, Lord Jesus, in the city of God, produce fruit. It said every month. If you want some watermelon in June, you better start planting it. Amen? But God says, y'all know God a farmer, don't you? The husbandman, right? Now, how much stuff y'all taking for healing? I went down there and the doctor told me that my knee had some ulcer in it. My neck was hurting. They gave me three pills. 
mouth still dry. I ain't took none in <laughs> three days. God said for the healing of the nation. Now we sing them songs, no sickness there. There ain't no reason for you to be sick. When you got that tree. Y'all all right in here? All right, now, now, so Paul says, Paul says, in an instant. Now that's those, and, and I don't know, don't start me to fear me now. And here's where we have to be also spiritually satisfied. You have to take what God gives you. Don't try to make no more out of it now. I don't know what the body going to be like. I don't know now. But whatever it's going to be, he said, just like that, you're going to go from this to that. And we, we think we think folk be fine now, don't we? Sure enough, going to be a, a amen. You're going to be your, you're going to be your, you're going to live your best life, ain't it? That's what they say. All right. So both of these passages, 1 first, first Thessalonians 2, 19 and 20, and 2 Corinthians 4, and 14, and I just gave you another one. 1 Corinthians, what was that, y'all? 15, all right, and, and 52, all right, and, and we got the one, where the tree at? Revelation? Revelation what? Revelation 22 and 2, all right. Now, how we know this stuff? How we know this stuff? God's word. Holy Spirit helping us. All right. Both of these passages reveal Paul's expectation of being with his converts at Christ's coming. This is important now. When we look at 2 Corinthians, these are those that have been taught by the churches of Christ. Right? When we look at 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, these are folk that have been taught by the Lord's church. You don't just stumble upon belief in Jesus. All right? The two recognizing them will be a source of great joy for Paul. All right? And now Paul was taught directly by Jesus Christ. Paul didn't go to Faulkner. <laughs> Paul didn't go to Southwestern. I ain't bashing no, no school. Paul didn't go to Heritage. Paul was taught directly by Jesus. And don't y'all know Jesus will teach us if we let him? All right, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Somebody hadn't read? Somebody hadn't read? Want to get a piece of this? Matthew chapter 8, verses 11, 12. Matthew chapter 8, 11, 12. And I say unto you mm -hmm. that many shall come from the east and the west uh -huh. and shall sit down with Abraham mm -hmm. and Isaac mm -hmm. and Jacob Where? in the kingdom of heaven. Uh -uh. But the sons of the kingdom shall be cast forth into the outer darkness. There shall be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Listen, listen to Jesus now. Now, mm, we, we ain't going to go you know, deep off into this. But we understand that the blood of Jesus covers every dispensation. The blood of Jesus reaches all the way back to Adam and Eve. Amen? All right. So now, so now he says, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are going to be in the kingdom Y'all seeing that? They're going to be seated in the kingdom. But now watch this. Watch this. The sons of the kingdom shall be cast forth in the outer darkness. Preach to everybody in the church ain't going to heaven. Some of us better quit playing. Amen, church. Now, watch this. The seed of Abraham, and that's 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 prevalent today now. 
when you look at many who claim the Jewish heritage, they do not believe in Christianity or in Christ or in his church or in the gospel of Christ. So now God intended what Paul say, my prayer for Israel is that they may be saved. But many folks, and especially in our world, y'all remember we started the lesson and I shared with you that post? Many folks already have a belief about Christ and they will not listen to the truth about Christ. And some, even in the kingdom, even in the church, won't listen concerning Christ. We get hard heads sometimes, don't we, church? Come on now. But some of us will go way on the channel. We got some brethren that's playing with some dangerous stuff. You know, we was taught in the Lord's church, and I don't know what changed. Have y'all been seeing this here lately? All this pastor stuff in the churches of Christ? I started to say a booger, but I'm not going to say booger. Let me, let me talk proper. An individual hadn't been married to nobody, but now they pastors in the churches of Christ. Why isn't the word good enough? Why isn't what God says and what God has told us, why is that not good enough? Even Paul, and, 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 and some sure don't like this kind of talk. I'm not condemning folks that have went to school and, and got their papers. But even when you look at the apostle Paul and you look at Luke the physician, Paul says, I'm a minister. He says, I'm a preacher, an apostle, an ambassador. But we get wrapped up in all these titles. Doctor this and pastor that. Be careful, church. Be careful. Amen. Pastor got to be appointed. I got a hand. Come on, sir. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Job said, for I know not to give flattering titles unto man. I stop folks in a heartbeat. I'm just, I'm just old preacher. Amen. Not, not pastor. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Reverend. No, not me. <laughs> Holy and reverend is God. Ain't that right? And we ought to give reverence to him and him alone. All right. All right. Uh, so in Matthew, it says reference is made to uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. The recognition, and, and let me back up real quick. Uh, it it needs to be good enough for us, and it's good enough for those who have influence on in the world. If a fellow was to come in that door, and he wanted somebody that can uh, possibly have some influence in this place, he's looking for the pastor. Because the pastor got some rank, right? And so many times we will allow that association to be upon us because we feel like if we tell them, oh, I, I, I'm the minister, I just preach, I, I serve, amen, then that's not heavy enough. And folk ain't going to respect that. But we don't need an ill-gotten respect, amen? What God give us is enough. What God give us is enough. Let me get back on this right here because that ain't even the lesson tonight, y'all. But, but folk need to quit playing. And that's why he says, many in the kingdom, there will be well in the gnashing of teeth. When that thing really get real 
and you find yourself on the other side of the gulf and you can't get over there where God is, you'll realize, and then all the folk you done messed up with your false teaching. Amen. All right, let me let me go on for my back. My back get warm. All right. Y'all all right in here? All right. All right. The recognition of which would increase the joys of those present and the dismay of those cast out into outer darkness. All right? That's the reference that we see in those verses we just looked at. Let's look at this. Moses and Elijah. Moses. Uh, so, let me, let, me, let me ask with y'all a little bit this evening. Has anybody ever come back from the dead? Huh? Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Has anybody ever come back from the dead? Come, we, 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 we study the scripture now. Then what about Lazarus? Didn't Lazarus come back from the dead? Didn't that boy fall out the window? Paul preached under midnight. He was dead. Brother Maxwell, he, he was dead. Yeah. You to fall asleep on the preacher. Hey. <laughs> hey, man. Paul went down there and got him up. Right? Huh? Ah, the little boy in in uh uh who who was uh what was the prophet? Was that was that Elijah? Stay with the woman. And 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 the boy died. He laid across his body. Hmm. Laid across the boy's body and. The boy came back to life. Oh, that's this folks that done came. Right? Now, I want to be clear, and, and I got this hand over him. Jesus, the Bible says, was the first born of the dead. When we start talking about so evidently whatever God did and, and some of those mir were miraculous acts to show the power of God. All right. So we don't want to get twisted. We need proper context. Right. All right. So evidently. Those folks did not go through judgment. Y'all thinking in here with me? We studying now. It is appointed unto a man once to, and after this, the judgment. Come on, sister. Um, I just have a question. Come on. Um, when I was working, it was about a couple months ago, um, mm -hmm. and a man came in. Mm -hmm. They don't come in that often, but he came in, and he was asking me all these questions. Mm -hmm. Um, and yes, he is a member of the church, but he was asking me all these questions. I was like, yeah, yeah, because, you know, I really didn't know the answer. And he said, all right, now let me tell you this. Who, ro who rose with Jesus? I was like, huh? He said, somebody rose with Jesus. His name, <laughs> it was started with a J. He said, somebody, it was somebody that rose with Jesus and went to heaven with Jesus. And I was, I was just been stuck on that because I don't. Well, let me tell you this. When you see him again, <laughs> you tell him to give you book, chapter, verse, proper context. And we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, now, we got some folks that showed up and met with Jesus that we're getting ready to look at right now. And I have not found where anybody rose with Jesus on that on that Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be careful with that stuff. Be careful with that stuff. All right, let's look at this. Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. 
And you got to be comfortable saying, I don't know about that. <laughs> Amen. 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 Sometimes that's the smartest answer on what you're talking about. Let me see it. Write that down. Let me, let me, let me, let me, what a scripture at on that. Amen. All right. Here we go. Matthew chapter 17. Now watch this. The Bible says after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, his brother, bringing them up to a high mountain apart. He was transfigured. Now, uh, what that mean? What that mean? What, what was Jesus? What was Jesus? Jesus, and some folk have issue with this, Jesus was man and God at the same time. He was the word made flesh. He was the presence of God wrapped in skin. Old preacher said, Jack of the flesh. Now, he was transfigured before them. Let's, y'all want to study a little bit? Or y'all in here? Y'all in here? Let's, let's study a little bit. All right. This word, transfigured, metamorphothe. That sound like something to y'all? Metamorphothe. That sound familiar to y'all? Metamorphosis. That sound familiar? Meta. Metamorphosis, all right? And so the Greek origin, and y'all know I ain't no scholar now, but we can study, ain't that right? To transform. Y'all ever seen Transformers? Y'all don't like them, y'all don't like them action movies? Transformers? Transfigure. It comes from the word meta and the word morpho. Metamorpho, put them together, metamorpho, metamor to transform. Now, it's going to tell us what that looked like. Let's, let's go back to the, let's go back to the text. All right? He was, he was transfigured, metamorphosis before them. Now, and his face did shine as the sun. And his garments became white as light. And now, behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. They didn't talk to Peter and them. They talked to Jesus. Peter answered and said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Thou wilt let us make three times. And while he would get, we, and we've talked about that over and over again. Uh, you know, it wasn't their job to build no tabernacles or churches. Christ was going to do that. This is my beloved son to whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Now, I don't know what Moses and Elijah looked like. Didn't say they was, they was transformed. Jesus metamorphosis so there he changed from this body and he revealed something and it was like we ain't got to guess what it looked like now it said like pure white light his face so now 
I can still see his facial features. So it's Maxwell. I still, that's Jesus, but his face, radiant, white light. Not only that, Charlie clothes. He clothes now. His clothes start shining. We ain't talking about disco fever now. Y'all see the power of God? You can't make your clothes shine. Even the garments that were on him became amplified in pure white light. Now what y'all would have did? What y'all would have did? We talk about Peter, but what y'all would Come on, church. I know that ain't, ain't proper. Ain't what y'all would have did, though. <coughs> the one said she'd have ran. <laughs> don't, run from, don't run from the Lord. <laughs> what old man told me one time. All right. Now, they knew. This is Matthew's account. Now, was Matthew there? Who went up the mountain? Peter. James and John and Jesus. And as they went up there, Jesus just decided to boom. Was that was that the real him? He was transformed. Everything that was created was created by him for him and through him do all things consist Lord have mercy mm -hmm. all right watch this it says all clearly indicating that we will indeed know one another after death that's that's what it appears now but what are some objections commonly made about this view and how might one answer them so let's look at some some uh, objections to consider all right uh if we can actually recognize one another then we'll probably miss those who are not there And, and see, you got to be careful with a bunch of speculation. You know what I mean? Uh, and this might make people unhappy in heaven. Because I'm, I'm, I'm missing folks that, that, uh, that I, I wish was here. Now, now, in misery, y'all remember the, the rich ruler, the rich man? The rich man? Y'all remember the rich man? What happened in hell? He lifted his eyes, right? Now, he was in anguish in them flames, in torment, and he was sad. And he was like, I want to make sure don't none of my folks come down here, right? We say down here. So let me ask you something. Have you ever went somewhere, now this don't compare to heaven, but went somewhere where, child, I'm talking about you just had a good time. I mean, just enjoyed yourself. Was you worried about who wasn't there? <laughs> Y'all mean that? <laughs> Was you worried about, huh? It's tax season. Some folk man might get two, four hundred, hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. Uh, some might get a couple thousand. Now, now if, 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 uh, K. Ivan send you five thousand dollars, you gonna be sad because she ain't send me five thousand dollars. 
My soul is sad, brother. Sir Sheen. Soul is soul that just upset me. So you, 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 you didn't get no money. You mean tell me? Now we just we just talking. We just studying and talking, having a good time. Having a good time with the word, ain't we, y'all? You mean tell me you make it to heaven after all this hell. And you're going to be sad. We might as well go ahead on and accept the reality, especially if we don't get on our job and start teaching our friends the truth of the gospel. You can't save everybody. Some folk don't want to be saved. Know what I mean? They all right with the life and the world as it is. They good. I don't hear none of that stuff. That's okay. But you teach and you, you give folk an opportunity to make an a educated decision about Christ. Right? But you, you can't save everybody. Child, we can't save everybody in the church. Folk in and out, we can't. And y'all, I'm not going to, I ain't going to be stressed out. I want your soul to be saved, child, but you got to want your soul to be saved. Right? But we might as well face the fact that some that we call our friends, some that we call our associates, some we have a good time with now, are not geared toward heaven. Amen. And the real question might be, how much longer are you going to hang with folks that ain't making it their business to please God? Is that too, is that too hard, y'all? Too heavy? Let's, 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 let's close this down. It says, it says, the answer to the question if we could actually recognize one another, won't we miss folk post that's not there? And man, wouldn't that make folks unhappy in heaven? And you know, that's not a that's not an unhappy place, right? He said, What about what about Jesus? Would Jesus not miss many people that he sincerely admonished, as in the case of the rich young ruler? Now, who do you think of all folk might be disappointed that people don't make it to glory? Because God is not willing that any should perish, right? Let's go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. And this, y'all, I, I, I don't, I don't want to sound, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not giving up on folks. I'm not saying that, you know, we're not concerned about the souls of folks. That's, that's, not, that's not where we stand at all, right? But let's, let's finish up with this right here. Let's finish up with this right here. We'll start with uh, uh, when we die, all right, what earthly ties uh, that we're not in Christ. We'll start with that next week. Let's get this real quick, all right? Mark chapter 10 and verse number 21. Now look at this. And I want to encourage you, don't allow, you know, attempts to teach people Jesus to cause you to lose your fire, okay? Keep teaching. Keep sharing the word. And we're, we're working on some ways to up our evangelistic game here at Lucas Street, all right? Now watch this. Watch this. He says, all these things, this man came to Jesus. And sometimes we see this. Folks come to the church or they come into the presence of Christ. And when they find out what Christ is all about, they say, well, no, that's not what I was looking for. Verse 21, he said, Jesus looking upon him loved him. And said unto him, one thing thou lackest, go sell whatever you have, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But his countenance fell at the sand. And he went away sorrowful, for he was one who had great possessions. Look what Jesus said. Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches 
enter into the kingdom of God. He said, I want you to put your faith and trust in me so I can save you, so you can be with me for eternity. Real quick, y'all highlight this right here, all right? Would one then say that Jesus is unhappy in heaven? Perhaps the answer to the question lies in the following direction. So let's let's pick that up on next week. The answer to the question. We'll recap that on next week. On next week. Everybody good? Everybody good? And Lord willing, I'll have the the rest of the lesson. All right. All right. Have the rest of the lesson. You keep it. Okay. All right. All right. Everybody got a copy, right? So far? All right. All right. All right. All right. Let us be standing. We'll have a closing verse of a song and a prayer. Hmm? Oh, Saturday, 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 Saturday. The youth will have an outing. They'll meet here. They're going to have a little uh, meal and devotion and fellowship. And then they will go out to stars and strikes. All right. Let the church say amen. And also, uh, I put in the group message for the um, 17th. The 17th, we're invited to go over to the nursing home and have a devotion and worship service with them at 2 o'clock for those who would uh, like to meet us and go do that. Maybe we have time to go get a bite to eat and then go over to the nursing home. There is one Lord and one faith and one baptism. There is one Lord and one faith and one baptism. There is one Lord and one faith and one baptism. And I'll tell it. Wherever I go. Righteous Father, we thank you for allowing us to come to this place and study your word without hurt, harm, or danger. We ask, Lord, that you would give us traveling grace and arriving mercy back to our abodes. Bless those who are not able to be here on tonight, Lord, that they might be able to come on the next appointed time. Father, we look forward to worshiping you in spirit and in truth on this coming Lord's Day. Forgive us for our sin once again, Father, and we just thank you for your provisions. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.